anybody else when they eat a candy cane, they can't just like suck on it. They have to bite it. It's like um a tissue pop, tissue roll pop. Like the owl is like a one, a two, kind of like that thing. Like you can't just like you have to bite it. I don't know. friends so i just finished recording my reaction to episode four of yo yes violet evergarden <laughs> pause the dive into episode five of violet evergarden very very excited this series is visually ridiculously gorgeous i mean they are just flexing the whole way through last episode with the lights and the colors and the diffusing and the way the light works with flowers and other amazing things, and I'm just like, oh, wow. And it's just absolutely impeccable. It is one of those things where it's like, oh. I don't think they do Emmys for recorded, uh, for visual, uh, for animes or animations, but I, if they did, this one would probably take the cake. Now, I did say on episode, the first few episodes, that I would listen, I would watch the episodes that I already reacted to the English dub to see if they had accents, to see any differences, but I know I haven't done that. I probably won't do that until maybe get halfway through the series, and then I'll start, you know, like, hey, we're halfway through the series, let's see what I've we've learned and kind of gathered. The first two episodes I realized were kind of, even though they are part of the series, they were more like Ova's used to build up the series because we didn't really get our intro officially, I think, until episode three. Now, I, this is still episode five, and I will treat this as episode five. However, the, um, that it just, the only thing that might affect is how I pair up episodes, if I do pair up some episodes. I don't know if I will. Probably will. Yeah. Um, anything else to say? No, some announcements. We are probably in February by now. Things are still going smoothly. You know, we're still doing a Sound Station Classroom. Mob Psycho 100 will be taking place right after. I think in April or May, My Hero Academia comes back. Uh, I know I made an announcement in video talking about how th there was a reason why I decided, even though Layback Camp had just come out, Season 2 had just come out at the time, why I was wholly off on reacting to it. And even though I had a video with no sound and barely a very translucent partial image Mulby still was like others so uh for that you know a couple of reasons why i'm holding off but most of the anime schedule is still on point once we finish violet evergarden a place farther than the universe is actually going to be next uh might pair it with laid back camp we'll see how that goes i might do it just to kind of get ahead because after those two i will be diving into hebk euphonium I was kind of hesitant on that series, but then I looked into it and uh, I saw some clips from another reactor, and that didn't really doesn't really spoil anything for me. But I saw some clips and went, "Oh, this is gonna be my kind of series because this really is like, oh, that's me in high school, not you know, not not um, oh, the cute one, the the brunette with the, like the fluffy hair, uh, I, not her, but there's so many aspects of it that I'm like." I, yep, 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 high school, that's why I experienced that, experienced that, experienced that, experienced that, experienced that. So, I realized it is kind of my high school experience, um, more or less. So, I figured that would be a perfect series to do for Anime Thursday, once uh, Place for the Universe and Laid Back Camp Season 2, I finished reacting to those. Of course, once we finish Assassination Classroom, and I keep saying this, and I'll say it again, and I think I just said it, Mom's Like a 100. I'm not sure how I'm gonna handle the fifth season of My Hero Academia. How, when, how, and when I will react to it, but how and when I do is up in the air. For live action shows, I've gotta finish One Woman by still. I've just been lazy and haven't been doing it. I need to plan out my time better. But I've a bunch of other things to get to. And even though I said, eh, I wasn't sure if I was gonna react to Superman, 
I was a Superman Lois. I was like, eh, we'll see how it goes. But then the trailer came out for it, and I went, holy mackerel. This is going to be so different. The, I mean, the color is different. The, the It does not feel like a CW series, which is interesting. And I heard that HBO Max is involved with some of the stuff. So I went, oh, holy mackerel. This is not what I expected. This is this is not yeah. So I got I saw that and I got really excited. So really reacted. And and who knows what the summer brings? I am applying for some summer internships, but who knows in terms of working out or reacting once that'll happen, what that'll look like. Um but that's in the future and we will cross those bridges when we get to it. We still have to you know, finish Violet Evergarden and Wonder Woman eventually. So if you're on YouTube, it's follow along on YouTube. No sound. Partial, partial translucent image. So you can kind of follow along. If you'd like, there's a countdown timer. You can't miss it. But there is a pit version. Somewhere. Somewhere. Without further ado, let's dive in. Yes, ma'am. I'm gonna watch this show and love it. So, I've mentioned this before, but there are quite a few series that. Ooh. Oh, that's good. Oh, business is thriving because we were reminded that when he didn't get paid because he bought the opal for her. Oh. There would be. Because war makes them money and they, it keeps them from, you know, it helps them get what they want. Published love letters? Oh, that's interesting shape. It almost looks a bit like uh, Australia. So, Drossel. That's a name. So he's sitting by that on a mission. The Kingdom of Drossel. Board. Oh yay! She he sent the other guy with him. Hmm. Nice. No, no, it's not him. He's just a other cute blonde. <laughs> I got to clean my glasses again. Gonna put it on top of my head. That's a castle. Drossel. That's that's German. Princess Charlotte. I don't remember y'all at your service by Evergarden. She's not even in there. Oh, I, or maybe she's hiding. That was weird. There was a moment. I thought I saw a bed that was open. I had a moment. This is weird. Do it one, one more time. Oh my gosh, she looks just like Charlotte. <laughs> also very formal little thing. Oh, she also has a puppy doll. Oh, wait, did they have something underneath? Underneath her uh, corset? Because... She doesn't feel how wonderful it is. Doll. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting how she kind of hid behind her mouth that way. 
Tell me, doll, how old are you? I thought we kind of guessed she was around 17. She's a youngin. <gasps> oh my gosh, she is a kid. That's so young. I thought she was like 17. Oh, those are, um, oh, heck, I forget what those are called. Why would she feel interested in my... Alex takes his face off of me. And some arranged marriages end up being really, really good. Oh! <gasps> She's so young. She's 10! She's 10! Or did they say a 10 year difference? But she's still young. <laughs> you know, it happened a lot. Hmm. I see her from the eyes of a stranger. Mama. But you're <laughs> kind of bratty, isn't she? I'm a princess. <laughs> Where'd you learn that? That was so weird. <laughs> Oh, I love when you hear the click of her hands. So she simply typed up what was written then. Does it really make her skirt heart skip? There is a slight smile to her, but she's really paying watching this princess. Oh, and she's reading it with a freaking flower in her hand. There's so much going on here. I didn't know she was 14. But I would love if somebody who's like has experience with costumes looked at this. I don't know if there's someone who has because the biggest gripe they seem to have. Did she write that? It was pretty good. So how long has she been? That was published and sent out really fast. He oh he replied with his own letter. <laughs> um, but their biggest gripe with these costumers is that there's never anything underneath the corset, and they're supposed to be. Hmm. There's a lot going on in this girl's hiding heart. Is she... Well, yeah. Well, is she... Frustration, perhaps? Oh, oh I was right! <sighs> Her whole life. Uh, probably helped raise her. Thinks of her as a daughter, too. Uh-oh. I know she took it down, but I don't remember her dropping it on the floor. <gasps> what if she was kidnapped? She's not there. She's not there. What if someone stole her to, like, to stop it? Oh, she is there. Oh, f oh okay. Getting stressed over nothing. Oh, she's kind of bratty sometimes, but she's also just an emotional child. I was gonna say she's probably the one who raised her. 
Can't she be her lady in waiting? Can't she go with- Oh, I guess the queen would have to make that decision. She doesn't want to leave pretty much her mom. F. Oh. Kind of stubbornly wonderful lady. She understands what the princess is going through, and she's probably. Oh. <laughs> I feel so bad for her. Again, I love how of all the places. Oh, like it, like it makes the people so excited. She's been there for a while, then. Um, how of all the places for, again, emotion is that the way her surprise hits her. Just write whatever you want. And that's her assumption. I bet he is. And I bet he's writing them. <laughs> she must really like him. I guess. Maybe they feel very formal. Oh, she has met him! Fuck. Okay. He probably didn't. Well, it's probably been years. She was so young. She still was so young. But, he wouldn't speak to her quite the same. Metaphorically. I don't know if she... <laughs> That's gonna be hard for her to do, but she'll try. But I was saying... That I love those those few moments where we see her emotions. We we're, we're seeing it more in her eyes, but it's usually surprise, and then in her hands, which of course of all places to see emotion from her is interesting. But you were a baby. You're still a baby. She's a little. I know. It's just so squeaky. Well, for a girl, it's still squeaky. I was like a place in England. And that's still true today. A lot of pr a lot of girls over you know, child marriages are still huge, especially in the Middle East. Oh, I know that voice. <laughs> I know the voice. So she's 10 and he's... There's a 10 year difference. So then she's 20. She's, she's still a little bratty. I love the little head pats they do. Yeah, which is very lovely. No. So these this flowery language then, she does not think that's really him. He treated he spoke truthfully to her. Hmm. This war has been going on for a while, and it hit like a four-year thing. From him, of all people, for her. There's a lot going on. Ooh, this girl, like, came to bat! Huh. So she got offered it, did the research, and then it became official. Love it. <laughs> Sorry. You know, that happened a lot with a lot of foreign queens, where they were just kind of by themselves. Mm. 
These published letters are shaking her. Throwback episode? Three. She must be so tired. And frustrated and exhausted. But now she's okay with overstepping her bounds. But that breathes in from last episode. These episodes are very standalone, so I don't really think it matters. She knows who the doll is. Oh my gosh, is it Coolia? But that would be interesting that each doll has the kind of their own way of speaking. So as in your profession, you would be able to pick up on who may be writing the letter. So he wrote in his own handwriting, using your own words, now she's going to write. It's kind of helping her construct a letter. <laughs> He's a little uncouth, I suppose. And of course, that's gonna affect that even more. My hot diaper crybaby. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh my gosh! I love how this is actually getting them even more. Oh, she might have a friend then. I like how this is getting them even more excited. <laughs> this is like, I love this. Each letter comes with a flower. Gosh, she is 14. She's so young. That's a short letter. I like how Violet has learned to well, very well and truly great. Oh my gosh, she is so mad. She is so mad. <laughs> Way to rile her up. Oh my gosh, this is great. This is getting the people like so excited. They're well. She is like so determined. When this this girl clearly when she wants what she wants, she goes for it. Girl is fierce. I love how her arc. That's a long letter. I love how her arc having this one episode from a bit of a cry bratty crybaby to this kind of fierce, you know, bratty crybaby to also heart tempered, but also, you know, um, very f formidable young girl. And she's only 14, like that. Woohoo! She must have been there for months. <sighs> yeah. 
Only they would know what garden. Only they would know. What if he's hurt? What if he got hurt during the war? And that's why he's so hesitant. No. Okay, he looks fine. She wouldn't make a good queen. So kind of icky by the fact she's 14 years old. Now he's saying it face to face, not just some letter. This is very sweet, but also it's a little like mm, she's 14. Okay. Um, but it is crazy. Yeah, it does have a happy ending. And they are going to be probably one of those marriages that last for decades upon decades. They have an amazing kingdom. And they're well loved for generation for generation. They're going to have a ton of kids. She already up and going working. Where is she? <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, she said. Ooh, look at her. She got married that day. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, she's still there. She wants to see this fall through. She does. They probably became friends. She probably was there for months. Probably not. I was gonna say probably not. Oh my gosh, I love her wedding dress. Oh, there's little flowers in it. Oh my gosh. She's the white flower. I don't know what that is. She raised you. Mm, look at you. Gosh. All righty. Mm. Ooh. <laughs> kind of bad her if she was a queen. Gosh, she has the flowers. It's like pollen. I don't know how I felt about that though. Oh my gosh. No, that was she was the one. Oh, she does. <laughs> I wonder, I thought it was Laculia. But uh, I guess because of how flow the language, she kind of figured it out. It was her. <laughs> Good for you. Is that what I owe you? <laughs> Always through food. Oh gosh, she's got both the flowers. She's smiling. Oh, Gilbert's brother. He's ticked off. Whoa! That's cruel. Is that how he found her?
All right. I know how I'm going to pair the episodes together now. Gosh. Well, okay. So, no, I will have episodes three and four air the same day. You probably will have figured it out by now. Five, which again, you will figure it out by now. Will air by itself. <laughs> On its own. <laughs> and then we'll go from there. Uh, that's how I must have found her. So she, was she still in car? You know what her story reminds me of a little bit? Is Cassandra Kane from Batman. She was the second Batgirl. An amazing Batgirl. She oh my gosh, look into her story out of like all the Batgirls have very, very unique backgrounds. But Cassandra Kane's is like oh my gosh, it is like amazing. Amazing background. When I saw the trailer for the Birds of Prey movie that I have not seen and will never ever watch. As soon as I saw what Cassandra looked like in the movie, I went, no, 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 no. You just took a character that was grade A top level steak and turned it into a cheapo New York hamburger. Um, you know, with New York, with New York City inflation. Like, you know, oh, 10 bucks for a hamburger. Oh, 10 bucks for a hamburger. Like, it just, it's just like, you just like, how, how do you take a character that's amazing and make it that pathetic. Like, do an original character. Don't do that. Don't sabotage. Like, that I, that movie drove me. I didn't watch it, but the trailer, I'm looking at all the characters going, how do you make characters that amazing? How do you make them worst in the name of feminism? Oh, wait, that's what feminism does. Sorry. Now, let's get back to where we're going. Left field. We went out of left field. Okay, so... The point is, Cassandra Kane's story is very, just from that scene, with like, huh, there's some similarities there, perhaps. Um, not quite understanding people's feelings, not understanding their own feelings. Um, now, the difference is that Cassandra doesn't, didn't talk and didn't, couldn't read. This is very different. She, she's learned how to talk, she learned how to read. It's almost like kind of later version of Cassandra Kane. But the point is, that was kind of cool. This was a beautiful episode. Yes, the fact that she's 14 still is kind of like a little squeaky. But that happened all the time. And there were marriages like that where, unfortunately, it was a child. She was very, very young. But for most places, if you were 13 or older, you were considered an adult. Just to what uh, you were allowed to do, what you were capable of doing um, in many ways. And then it was very common, of course, to be much older and much younger. The fact that he's only in his 20s isn't actually that bad. Versus someone being in their 30s or 40s. Um, I did not realize Violet was 14. I thought she was at least 17. I thought she, I thought I remember in the first episode saying she was 17. But she was 14. She must have been a... Wait. that She must have been like Charlotte's age when she was... With, when she was found by Gilbert. Or at least 12. She was a baby. She was a baby. Um, but to kind of go back around to Charlotte, um, there are examples of marriages where, and even with that age difference, with they kind of, they are, it is sort of arranged, um, for whatever reason, and they end up having an amazingly long marriage with many kids. Most people had many kids because, like, over half of them died, but basically, deeply in love, Wait, Charlotte Astril. Wait, wait, hold on a second. There's a queen named Charlotte Astrillis. I, I, I gotta, I gotta look it up. Hold on a second. So I kind of looked them up a little bit. The age difference isn't quite as big because I'm curious to see if there is any similarities between Charlotte of Strelitz and King, the marriage of her, her and King George the Third. Because I remember she, her and him were mentioned in the movie about their like love their deep love um they had 15 children majority of which survived adulthood which is so rare but uh now the age difference was not as big he was supposedly 22 and she was 17 not as much but i'm wondering if drossel because that's such a, a german like a german name and a, i think it's a flower too oh, i gotta look it up again looking more stuff up what's a drossel i bet it's a flower I looked up Drossel, was overthinking it, 
there was like a lot of different look at I looked at the word drossel overthinking it there's a lot of different kind of things but it is a German word so it made sense that okay so well that's very German esque so and he might be then he would be in English so because her name is Charlotte I'm curious to see if then she is loosely based off Charlotte of Strelitz and her marriage to King George. Apparently, she met him at a party, actually. And it kind of went from there. Uh, but there might be some loose references to that. Again, Charlotte of Strelitz was German. So, I said Ross was a German word or German-esque word. Um... There's so much going on, but I, I, I love how it's like the two different kingdoms, the two different flowers. It's very cute. Obviously, she was there for a long time, quite a few weeks at the least. And so was, oh, I'm blanking on her name. It's, her last name's Baudelaire, though it's, it's French. But, and she also has that black hair, which is typical of French people. They have that black or dark brunette hair. Um, I think because they have that Roman influence, whatever. The point is that uh, I love how she kind of realized it was her co-worker. I was like, I think I know who the person is based upon how she writes. So, to kind of summarize my insanity going through here, there's clearly some references to some German and English monarchy interactions with Charlotte Strauss and all that. There was back in way before the war, uh, the First Great War. There's a lot of references to... I would say more so to World War One, just seeing what some of the technology is. It's very clearly more so reflecting of that because we don't really see. I don't think we've seen we've seen any vehicles. I think they've all been carriages. So I'm gonna go with we've got more of a World War One esque reference with a lot of the German and the healing and all that stuff going on. And I'm going to assume that Leiden, you know, is also a German word or name is probably more so like London kind of inspired by um uh inspired by um kind of the early days of that though a lot cleaner than London um never probably was but I, I think what's the most fun to see is, yes, the beautiful arc of Charlotte in just one episode. How she comes across kind of this bratty monarch right from the beginning that kind of cries a lot. And we get to see that what kind of woman she is and she will become. When she goes, you know, she not only, she, did, she didn't just receive a letter and like, and said, okay, I want to get married. She was like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some research. I'm going to propose why this is a good idea. So we already see... Again, she has a bit of a temper, but we kind of see that when she puts her mind to it, she runs. That girl is fierce, and I love that. And their marriage will probably end up being one that lasts a long time. Many kids deeply, deeply love for decades. It'll be a marriage of the century kind of thing. The published love letters is very invasive, but very cute and very sweet. But I do love when they actually got to write their own letters. That's very, very cute. <laughs> actually and uh that was funny i was like you know you owe me a steak and she was, but uh, but to finish that out what i love the most that we see in violet is her picking up on the nuances of people more and more so when her co-worker whose name i'm blanking on miss baudelaire says i think i want a steak or i'm in the mood for steak Violet picks up on the fact, is that what I owe you? Like, she still says it the way she does. I don't think it'll ever change. But she's able to kind of pick up on what the inference was. Better than I did, because I was thinking like, okay, good for you. <laughs> but she's kind of probably used to how her coworker speaks. And I love those moments where, again, usually for a while, the only emotions we would see at first is surprise on her face Violet's face because the, that emotion kind of pops through you. It surprises you when you're surprised sometimes. It kind of is one of those it's sneak attack emotions. And then we see in episode three where with Lakulia, where we get to see her kind of her emotions don't come across on her face, but we see them through her hands. Again, interesting how her hands 
even though they're not technically, they're not flesh and bone, they're prosthetics, fancy prosthetics, but prosthetics, you still see her show emotion through gripping the paper, through tightening her hands, just little things like that. And I'm like, of all the places to show, well, areas where it's hard to hide emotion. Because sometimes you can school your face, but sometimes the way our hands move, the way our bodies shift, uh, maybe the way our eyebrows even move, can uh, give something away that we don't realize. But what we're seeing more so is that moment when she went like this was very funny. <laughs> but what we're seeing more so is not only her emotions coming through her eyes, like we saw her when Charlotte was sad, her determination. But also, at the end of the episode, we see her emotion coming through her mouth. Where, for the most part, what we would see is more of the dropped mouth, wide eyes of surprise. And then sometimes her emotions would come through her eyes a little bit. But now we're seeing more of her emotions come through. So as she's around this environment, she's learning to emote and to kind of, it, it's sort of coming through more naturally. And Violet will probably always be Violet, a little kind of stiff, a little awkward. But we are seeing the span of, I would argue more so a few episodes, probably a few months really. We get to see her growth. And again, we do so as, you know, she's not always, she's not really the focus of these episodes. The other characters are, but because of what they're doing and her involvement, we get to see her grow too. While their growth and what they work through is a bit more in the, in the forefront, Violet, because of how she is, they've made her growth more subtle. And I think being able to watch these episodes more so back to back, it's easier for me to pick up on. If I watched them week by week by week, I would probably miss some stuff. Which is nice to be able to watch things back to back. Um, that ending of the episode, though, that was intense. She is this weapon. She was trained to kill and to just act before she thinks, before she speaks, which we see early on. That's kind of how she is. She's very upfront. Um, so we see how, you know, he found her and eventually, for some reason, gave her to Gilbert. I, I'm going to assume that that scene on the ship was pre-Gilbert. And perhaps he's very angry over the fact that... It looks like he had met him with him. Very angry over the fact that his brother is dead. And she, this tool, this creature, this monster, is still alive. This killing machine is still alive, writing letters, bringing people together, um, as he says. So, because he didn't seem quite invested in her when he gave her away. If he thought she was that dangerous, he wouldn't have given her to his brother, I'm assuming. But, there's probably some anger and frustration of the fact that his brother's dead and she's still around. And, I suspect through him, she will learn the truth. Use the of an episode. Thank you so much for watching and, you know, tolerating my blabbering I this was a, a phenomenal episode it wasn't as focused on the artwork as I usually am like last episode where it's just the tears like it's all gorgeous and crazy but there's little things that I think that, that what anime is beautiful at and what stories telling really should be but I think anime more so because everything that you see is purposeful it has to be you get to see so much going on non-verbally through the artwork as you do with the words themselves, with the action and the script. Whereas I think in some cases, live action movies, because you're kind of filming what's really there, the artistry of using the camera to convey the story as much as the script can sometimes be forgotten depending on who's writing, who's directing, who's producing. So this is a very much a cohesive teamwork effort to every little bit we see, every little cutaway, every little focus on the bottom of the dress, her hands, the, the way Charlotte bowed to Alberta like she was the queen, kind of as a way of saying thank you for being my mother, giving her a great respect that servants don't get. Um, it all, it's all beautiful and sweet and sad. Um, so that's all I've really got to say. I'm going to keep blathering on and I've got, unfortunately, I've got things I've got to get done. But thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, share with your enemies, and I'll see you next time.